Worms can cause serious problems in puppies that may even require emergency surgery to fix, but they can also spread it to us and the worms can end up in our eyes. And roundworm infection in dogs is very common and can be really serious in puppies. Hookworms, the problem really depends on where you are in the world. In warm, moist environments, this can be a really serious problem and is actually more frequently deadly. So with both roundworms and hookworms, they get transferred to the developing fetus through the placenta while they're growing inside their mother. They can also get transferred actually in the milk while they're still feeding from their mum. And the first signs of problems are often poor growth, a dull coat, they can develop a really hot belly as well. And then as the, the worm numbers climb, you can get vomiting, diarrhea, and you may see worms in those. With hookworms, you can get anemia. So the hookworm, it actually feeds on blood from your dog's intestine, and that can cause an awful lot of blood to be lost, which causes an anemia, a lack of red blood cells in the circulation that ultimately can and is fatal. Now, roundworms and hookworms, they can be transmitted to us. This is typically through what we call the fecal-oral route, so contaminated soil, ground, that we then ingest those worm larvae. Now, they don't cause problems in the intestine of us, we get what we call either visceral larval migraines, where the larvae, they actually migrate through the body and they can end up in the liver, in the kidneys, in the spleen, or more seriously, we can get ocular larval migraines, which is where the worms wriggle their way and the larvae wriggle their way into the eye. That sets up a really nasty inflammation that can ultimately cause blindness, particularly in children, the elderly, or those who are otherwise immunocompromised. And estimates actually suggest that 10,000 people in the US alone suffer from visceral larval migraines, and 700 every year suffer from these terrible eye conditions. Now, tapeworms are also very common, although they do take a little bit longer to develop. Um, they are typically transmitted through eating a flea that has a tapeworm larvae inside of it. These tapeworms, they kind of seg have segmented bodies and so they grow and grow and they can become really long within the intestines. Now, a lot of the, the signs of a tapeworm infestation are the same. What you might see rather than whole worms in their stool is like little grains of rice in their stool or even dotted around the back end of your puppy. But the big difference is that tapeworms can cause something called intersusception. And this is where the intestines effectively telescopes into itself, causing a complete obstruction that then needs emergency surgery to fix. And when we're thinking about a puppy deworming schedule, we need to bear in mind that Wormers are not the same as flea treatments in the sense that they kill the worms that are present in your dog or in your puppy at the time you administer them. They don't have a persistent action, which is different to our flea products, which work for the whole inter-treatment period. And so this treatment interval is based on the life cycle of the worms and how quickly they may develop a problem after having a successful worming treatment. And of course, in addition to actually giving your puppy a worming medication, you should also be ensuring that their environment is nice and clean, um, all stools are promptly picked up. That's going to really help with elimination of hookworm and also whipworm, which is another minor worm that can cause problems in severe cases. Regular flea treatment too is also going to really reduce the risk of tapeworms becoming a problem. And so how often should you be worming your puppy? Well, you should be giving a worming tablet for the first time when they're two weeks of age. We then treat them every two weeks until they're 12 weeks or three months old. After that, it's every month until they're six months. And then with adults, we change to a three monthly worming program. There's a couple of exceptions here. So the first is if you do have young children, um, elderly or immunosuppressed people in your household, consider worming actually every month to reduce the risk of the problems that we can get from these worms. And then with adult dogs, you could actually be taking a stool sample into your vet so that they can look to see if there are worms present before administering a worming treatment. Also be sure to use a vet approved product. And the reason I say this is because I have seen multiple times people use an off the shelf pet shop product. They've used the appropriate dose, the appropriate size of tablet or paste or liquid or whatever it is that they've bought 
and their dog, their puppy, has still experienced problems with toxicity. Now, these have all thankfully uh, completely recovered, but it's pretty scary and pretty dangerous when you're using a product how you feel you're supposed to. And this is especially important in puppies, younger animals who are more susceptible to toxicity. And worming is just one of the steps you need to take to make sure that you keep your puppy as healthy as possible. Click on this video, which talks all about the nine step program to a healthy puppy. But until the next time, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, because they're family.